Hello, hello. I am not from this country, and I could try your language, Macedonian, but uh, it didn't, won't work well. So I can try Croatian because I'm from Zagreb, and uh, that also won't work well because I can't guarantee that everybody will understand. So let's use English. All right? Okay. Hello. I'm Marco, and I uh, work at Software Sauna. Thank you. Yeah, a bit. Thanks. That's okay. Perfect. Cool. Yeah. Hey, hello, hello. Ooh, I'm louder now. Cool. Uh, I work at Software Sauna, and I came here to talk about parameterized tests, uh, which can be done using Jest, one of the JavaScript frameworks. Uh, but can also be actually done, we will see later, in any testing framework you use in JavaScript. Doesn't just doesn't matter. I'm just, uh, uh, I've mentioned just here because the examples use just. So we'll see. Um, okay, so any questions, direct them to me, and I will throw Sultra Sauna socks at your head. Because that's, I like questions, so you know, let me get the socks. All right, we have a lot of socks and stuff like that. So these are the socks. I'm not lying. Okay. It's very cold now and it will get colder, so you need socks. Okay. Right. Um, let's uh, get started. What is a parameterized test? So actually, what is a test, right? Like the test is just something that uh, uh, like interacts with your system. And if a test interacts with your system, you call it the system under test, but it's your code. It's the same thing, so uh, you just have a test and uh, it's calling your system. Uh, but what is actually in the test? Uh, well, first we have this input data and output data. No, sorry, this is expected output data, what we think that the system will return. And uh, we uh, have this kind of two sets of information, right? Then we poke the system with X, with the input data, right? Uh, if we poke the system, it will react in some way. It will react with uh, some output, some kind of reaction Z. And then we just compare Y and Z. If Y and Z, so the expected output and the actual output are the same, then the test passes practically. That's it. Now, the trick in uh, testing is that there is a lot of duplication. So uh, a lot of tests, thanks, a lot of tests, um, are needed to kind of cover the behavior of your system, but a lot of those tests actually look similar one to another. It's just, you know, sometimes some things change in your tests and some things are, same, are the same from test to test. So what changes uh, mostly? Or actually what stays the same? Let's see first what stays the same. Basically, usually these stay the same. So you poke the system in the same way, you catch the reaction of the system in the same way, and you compare the outputs and the expected output in the same way. What changes? Well, you know, these data that we uh, throw in the system, at the system and the expected output, they are, they, that's the thing that changes. So if we just extract the things that changes outside, then we have a parameterized test. This is the test. There is only one test function, but the, uh, we kind of extracted the input and output expected output data uh, out of it, so we can kind of, you know, call the test with parameters, controlling you know what data is actually used. And of course, we can once we have this, we can call it like many times, not just once, uh, with uh, various uh, values of x and y here in the example. And we call those, we can call those examples, right? Like uh, this, this is just a kind of a, you know, naming rule, but, but we, can, we can kind of refer or think about this as my system here's a behavior, and here is one example of that behavior, and here is another example, and here is another example. We can just have many examples of, of behavior of our system, uh, and uh, we can kind of uh, use the same test function for one kind of method, in, uh, if we're testing just one method or function. So let's call these just examples, and we, we can say like, okay, well, let's verify these examples uh, that my system does. So, uh, we can see how to achieve this in, in Jest, but first let's look at some alternatives. Uh, so basically things that are already out there, uh, libraries uh, mostly that you can use for uh, getting parameterized tests. First, Jest 
if you use Jest, Jest already has a feature which is called each, and uh, this is this is how you do it. So basically, uh, you call like test or it dot each, and then you just you know list your examples, and uh, after that you list your test function. You, you this is kind of a, you know the same thing that that. Uh, that you use for for uh, declaring the test without each the, the test name. This is the these are this is the new this is new thing. This is the arguments that you get from the examples, and uh, this is the ex the the actual test. This test only has the expect like only verification, but you can put any any code here and uh, verify at the end what is you know what is does the expected output match match the actual output, right? There is also another form of this each, which takes this. Kind of string, um, and uh, it has. Uh, if you kind of format the string in this way in its table form, uh, it can be kind of kind of readable to to the developer. But Jest will understand this, and again, you know, execute all these examples. Uh, what I didn't say, I mean, this these functions, this this expect, will be executed uh, the amount of times uh, that there are elements in this array, right? And this also. So this is kind of a. The point of parameterized tests that from one test function I get many test executions uh, depending on how many examples I have. There is also another library. Oh, so okay, so at least one thing that bothers me, at least with with uh, with this one, this this uh, lower one, is that uh, this is not really type safe. So if you're just using JavaScript, you know what's type what is type safe anyway. You know it doesn't matter. But if you you use TypeScript, then uh, you know that you know okay things can be type safe, and this is not really type safe. We can I can easily make a mistake in my test data here, and uh, you know test will either pass, uh, either either fail strangely or pass, which is even worse. Uh, there is another library here uh, I found uh, for this. It's called Just in Case. It's uh, kind of type safe or type safer. I didn't really. Uh, 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 investigated in detail, but um, this this is what it looks like. It's kind of weird because uh, the examples are uh, um, declared after the test itself, right? You see, these examples are, are below, and uh, the, the 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 test the test is here above. It's kind of well, I mean, it looks okay, but uh, uh, this is kind of you know uh, weird that you can't mess with this name. You can't kind of. I mean, uh, you you have to declare the test name like a string. You don't, you can't use, for example, this this test data, this input data for generating a test name, which you will see uh, in my examples. I actually can do uh, when I'm using my 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 uh, parameterized test pattern. And also, uh, both of these are kind of have one problem, uh, one additional problem, and that is that I have to know the DSLs. And yet another DSL for this. Like uh, uh, in, with just in case, I have to, you know, import the uh, added the dependency. And with just each, okay, I already have just no dependencies needed, but I have to know this syntax for each and whatever. And uh, uh, this actually isn't really needed because we have JavaScript. You can we can use just standard JavaScript stuff to parameterize our tests. Let's uh, look at how. So. Uh, there are a couple of kind of you know approaches to this, and I call them flavors because the flavor sounds better than an approach, right? It doesn't matter. So let's say that we have this function that does very complex things. It's uh, you know for adding two numbers, and uh, I mean as we know in JavaScript this is not trivial, right? But okay, uh, well, let's test. We have to test everything in JavaScript because it's you know kind of it's kind of wonky. Uh, let's uh, look at the first look, look at the first flavor of uh, parameterized tests. You see, uh, I'm using this describe block. I think uh, not not only Jest has it, or other test framework has this describe and uh, nest, nested describe blocks and stuff like that. But these here are examples, and these are just kind of arrays with elements in them. Nothing, nothing much. And of course, uh, these arrays are in an array itself, themselves, right? And this array, this outer array, is actually the array of examples. And we can, of course, iterate arrays. And we put the for each here. We destruct the element of the array with this kind of uh, array tuple, which we, which gives us the the uh, nice feature to name, to give uh, descriptive names to our array elements. And we just in the for each we. Call the IT function or the test function for just so calling the function 
is actually declaring a test for Jest or Jasmine or whatever framework you use. So basically, we just use this, and it works. I mean, there is no library here additional. This is just JavaScript and for each for arrays. Uh, additionally, we can um, do stuff, do clever stuff with the test name. So it's it's uh, generated like this. Uh, it's, we interpolate, you know, kind of our test input and the expected output in the in the test name. So the test names are kind of clearly generated, you know, for each example. And of course, the te the test itself has uh, also access to this uh, to these uh, destructed uh, uh, elements, and uh, we can just you know run the test. This is what the names look like. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> well, this is what the names look like. Uh, the, this, these clever names we 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 uh, kind of interpolated the, the data in from. So, let's look uh, at the variation, right? So the peanut flavor is like this vanilla flavor, but it's typed. So we kind of extract this example area. It's not so it's not uh, you know kind of this in inlined like this. We just extract it. When we extract it, we can define. Uh, we can we can type it, right? So. Uh, I don't know if how many of you use TypeScript. Okay, cool. So we, you guys know what this is. Uh, this is a type for this uh, array, and uh, this means that um, uh, our examples can't be like you can't type anything in the example. It, the TypeScript compiler will fail, like this, for example, right? So you can't just you know put strings or put more or less than three uh, elements in the in in each uh, example array. Because this is actually, you know, this is a type. This, this is an array of elements which are exactly arrays with exactly three numbers. Nothing else uh, will pass. So uh, this is kind of, a, you know, better than the last uh, version because it's type safe. Uh, and also you have this kind of, you know, little you know, examples uh, variable which you can reuse for other tests here uh, if, you, if they use uh, the same uh, type, uh, set of examples. And also it's named examples, so it's kind of more readable what, what they are. They are examples because they are, they're, they're variable as names. So. Um, here is another uh, flavor, a cookie flavor, where you don't have arrays, you have models, you have kind of a data structures. In, in types, TypeScript, uh, it, uh, interfaces are used to kind of have kind of structured data which, is, uh, which can be, uh, you know, kind of referenced uh, all, uh, all, all over the place and uh, be uh, type safe. So basically, the three kind of, you know, uh, values are now uh, replaced by three properties and their values, A, B, and sum. And all of the examples have to have the property names, of course, because this is just, you know, kind of JSON object, uh, JSON notation. Uh, JavaScript object notation, yeah. Uh, so uh, this is kind of simple. Uh, it's, it's similar to, to the, the, the arrays, but uh, it's kind of uh, more um, useful when you have a much more complex uh, set of examples, you know, like this one, like, like this. If you have this, uh, this is just copy paste from production code from one of our projects. So, uh, and it's, this is like from a, from a front end part, but it doesn't matter. You can see this, uh, you know, blows out of proportion quickly. If you have this, when you want to test and the component or, you know, whatever you're testing are, is very complex, then the tests are very, you know, huge. They have a lot of examples. And now imagine if you don't parameterize, you will have like a lot of copy pasted test methods. If you parameterize, you have a lot of this, and this is kind of more readable. And uh, it's, uh, it would kind of be, I think, less readable if these didn't have their property names next to them. So you would like, you know, you would have to deduce by the which, uh, which, uh, uh, in which order is the array element in. So you know, if it's the second data in the array, then it then it must be type, you know, because I remember there I, uh, I used type in the second place and stuff like that. Now this uh, first you don't have to you have the property name, and second the order of the elements within the example doesn't matter. It's just you know uh, by property uh, reference by property. So. This is why the, why, why the uh, cookie flavor is, is kind of useful. And then we have this kind of uh, couple of weird uh, uh, flavors. The cherry flavor where you have this kind of arrays in your production code which kind of, you know, are used by other production code. And you have to kind of test whether that production code uh, works fine for all uh, values of that array. Uh, this is kind of a contrived, contrived example. I mean, they all are. It's just you know adding two numbers. What can you you know test there? But uh, this is kind of what we uh, what, what it looks like. It's kind of like the same thing as the 
as the vanilla thing, like an array, an array uh, of examples. But this is kind of from production code, and you can you don't have to. Sometimes you don't have to uh, make examples. You can just use direct, you know, data that is already there in your production code. That's 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 the point of this uh, chair flavor. You see it like this. Yeah, I forgot to highlight it. This is this is what what it's uh, about. And of course, um, there is a variation. I think of this. Yeah. So basically, the same thing, but you have to, you want to skip some. Uh, you have a question? Okay. Uh, basically, this is the same, uh, but you want to skip some. You want to skip some 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 values because for some values other tests exist which test them, and and uh, you want to just uh, you want to just test some values. So, for example, you know, if a number you know if the 42 can be added to any number except itself, then you know you have to skip 42 from this array uh, when testing because it will blow up and. Uh, uh, this test will fail, but you know it's actually a, a wanted behavior, not not unwanted. Uh, I think, yeah, basically, you know, and this this is kind of just skipping skipping one case. You know, 42 is skipped from this array. Uh, the last, I think, is uh, kind of interesting. It's permutations. So you have when you have this uh, kind of several sets of data, and you have to you want to test. Uh, you know, kind of combinations of, of of all the elements in all of the sets. You just you know make for yourself a permutation of these. You just use two for each or three if we had a third array, and you just get you know a, a large amount of tests uh, out of the box. Just you know testing all of the combinations. And of course you can combine this with skipping some and stuff like that. So you can do wild things with you know for each <laughs> and filter and whatever, uh, and just use the you know at the end just use the just test function. Um, this is it. <laughs> uh, I have uh, so basically all of this code is uh, like written and tested. I actually, you know, all the tests pass, believe it or not, and you can check it out in here you know, on this repository. It's public, and uh, you know now uh, I'm open for questions. I have some kind of a quick reference slides here next, so you know I, we can quickly move through them. Just uh, tell me where do you want to go if you have questions, of course. Thanks. Questions? Hi, Marco. Great hey. presentation. Hello. Thanks. Is this a question? Yeah, I yeah. need a question for a sock. <laughs> for socks. Actually, you can get, get a pair of socks, not just one. Okay. Yeah. The, uh, 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 on floor. Darko will give it to me. <laughs> Go. Uh, are are the, the these flavors applicable to other test frameworks? Of or course, just, just yes. Any test framework who which has this uh, way of declaring uh, uh, functions, like from like you know, it's if, if you have a test or IT function and you call it, and then with that you declare a test, you can call this in a for each loop, and that's it. You know, it should work. I didn't try Jasmine, uh, but it should work uh, on Jasmine. I don't know. Uh, I didn't uh, also I didn't try any other test frameworks, but you know. Feel free to try and let okay, us know. Okay, thank you. No problem. We have another one over here. Oh, cool. Thanks. Hi, Marco. Just a short question. Uh, do you prefer skipping or isolating a test? And please, uh, by your opinion, what are the disadvantages of testing? The disadvantages. Uh, thank you. Do I prefer... Sorry, do I prefer skipping or... Uh, just Darko, could you return the mic? Yeah, yeah. No, return the mic. Okay. Do you prefer skipping or isolating a test? Or you mean isolate? like like uh, with uh, X it, yes. IT or something yes. like that? Uh, yes. Like well, I mean, I wouldn't. It, I don't see uh, much value in committing that code. It's kind of very extra, extra temporary for my like current, you know, current. Uh, Current, uh, you know, kind of uh, moment in time when when I when I write tests. But in general, uh, you know, there's no there's no need. If if the test really doesn't deserve to be there, then just delete it. I mean, it's in source control. You can always get you know get it later. Did uh, this answer your question? Do we have another? One? Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> Thanks. 
Thanks. Oh, thanks for your service. Hello, Marco. Uh, I was curious about, like, thank you for the presentation, by the way. I was curious about what you're thinking about the future of testing, considering the AI. Do you think, are we going to still write the tests, or AI going to create the tests for our? Yeah. We're, we're kind of playing. I mean, I'm, I'm and a few colleagues of mine are playing with the ChatGPT and the GitHub Copilot. Uh, it's interesting. I mean, um, uh, I, I, like tools are like they, they, I think they are cool, good tools, and we should use them. And you know, to kind of make our work more easier. And so, sorry, what? Yeah, exactly, exactly. But what I found is that you know, it's not good to to, to use it without knowing what it's, what the output is. You have to review and check the output, right? And if it helps you be faster and uh, you know get the Maybe boilerplate, you know, stupid code fa out faster. Then it's okay if you can check it. If you if you can really kind of uh, you know uh, evaluate the output. However, the question arises, you know, people I mean, who can evaluate the output uh, were were some uh, you know in some past time people who couldn't evaluate the output. We were all juniors when we started, right? Uh, but you know, so how will we you know how will we if you, if juniors use ChatGPT? How, how will they use it? You know, you have to, like, you have to, I think all of us, all of juniors or, you know, people who are new to, to, to this will have to, you know, go through the grunt work of just, you know, kind of learning stuff without AI uh, helping them uh, too much, I guess. Because, uh, you know, it's, it's not perfect. Uh, and I don't know if it's, it's hard to say if it will ever be uh, perfect. So it will ever, you know, be, so, uh, you know, not make any mistakes. But, for now, I guess we can treat it as uh, kind of like a in pair programming, you know, kind of a colleague, and you know, we'll help 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 each other out. Thanks. Yeah, one more. Yeah, thanks. Hi, Marco. So, 100% test coverage? Yes or no, and why? Okay, so uh, no. Uh, and uh, uh, this is interesting. So basically, um, okay. So I mean, the most popular, I guess, answer is uh, that uh, it's um, very easy to get 100% test coverage, and it's kind of a negative incentive, and gets you know people to write some stupid tests just to kind of you know uh, uh, run the code, but don't, don't actually assert anything because if they were asserted, the test would fail. So they just kind of you know tweak assertions to make the test pass, but get coverage. Okay, that's that's of course. Uh, but you know, let's assume that people aren't you know, that kind of you know uh, uh, in that mindset. Uh, the 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 problem with 100% coverage is that uh, you are uh, uh, you are having a very narrow vision of what software development is. Like it's not a number of you know percent coverage. You know, I usually when I when I run like test coverage and it's a number. Like I don't know, 70%, which is kind of you know lowish, right? 70% is not you know very you know stellar coverage. I uh, look at the coverage report, and I look at like actually what lines fail the coverage, right? So basically, if it's it depends on the coverage tool. You know, some tools uh, don't count the uh, data structures, right? And stuff like that. Like, and you know, I, I I'm okay with the data structure not being covered. Um, I mean, if, if it's not used at all, the IDE would tell me if it's not used, so I can delete the, the entire thing. But, but uh, uh, you know, you can kind of uh, see from the from the coverage uh, report that you, I mean, what, what I'm trying to say is that you should look through coverage reports. You don't, you don't. It's not enough to just, uh, you know, kind of. Oh yeah, 75%. Uh, that's bad. I'm not gonna, you know, approve your pull request. You know, whatever. It's 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 not 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 good. You, you should look at the actual cover coverage report and see you know what is covered and what is not covered. Uh, that's it. Okay, time for one more. Oh, there is uh, two more questions. Oh my God, okay. I'm running out of Let's socks. go with two. No, not really. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Hi, Marco. Thank you. I wanted to ask. Um, Oh, by the way, great presentation. I uh, wanted to ask, uh, because this seems to me that your kind uh, the parameterized testing is kind of locking you into repeatedly test testing this one feature, right? Because at the moment you're t testing whether this sums correctly and not anything else. Has this helped you in actually uh, writing uh, leaner code, for example, because uh, 
let's say pure fun pure functions and single responsibility methods uh, because you are kind of if you write this te test test before you implement the method you're kind of telling the method okay you have to behave like this and this does this help you in that uh, in that way does this help you actually uh, no uh, testing in general helps you don't have to have parameterized test for for this benefit uh, you can get it you can get you can get this benefit without parameterized tests. Parameterized tests are just there to uh, help you uh, have, get uh, more readable and concise tests. So basically, you don't have, it's, it reduces like copy pasting copy pasted code and makes your test more readable, which is really a good thing because you know. And I found that also I found that like these parameterized tests, even if there are like only two examples in the array, it doesn't have to be like you know ten or, or 20, 20 things. Even if there are only two. Extracting the data, you have to like this is work. You have to like you look at your test if it exi exists already, and you have to extract the data. And then this data is actually, uh, you know, the the raw like the, the input and expected output of your system. You have to kind of do a little thinking. Uh, you know, what is actually the what are the the the, the structures that are that are um, uh, input of in this test and what are output? Because there is in some tests there is data which stays which should stay in the test. Right? If you have like uh, uh, an element in in your examples that ne doesn't change, it's the same value through the uh, entire example array. This tells you something. You know what is this data? Why is this the same? I only want data uh, in the, our, my examples that uh, that is different from any other example. Right? I can, it, that doesn't make any sense. That you know I have like you know uh, one two three, one two four, four two five, seven two zero. The, the middle thing, the two, is like. What's that? Why is that always the same, right? If it's the same, if it, if should if it should be in the in the whole test, uh, you know, uh, infrastructure, then maybe it should be in the test function. It's a constant, maybe, you know, for some, it, maybe it's really needed, but you know, not, don't put it in my examples. So basically, when I extract the examples uh, out, uh, they are actually uh, I don't care how the system is called. What I care in the tests uh, is uh, you know what input uh, leads to what output, and this. Uh, you have like all sorts of uh, kind of nice and weird benefits. For example, this example array, or maybe, maybe this. This uh, this can be read by non-technical persons, right? I mean, I have it like okay. I gave uh, I, I have this example. I I found a piece of uh, our production code which has this example model, but it's not a b sum. It's like given blah and then value. When something else and then value, then so basically the examples become you know English sentences with with data in in in, in them and you know this I, I don't know if you if you've heard of behavior during development and uh, the various frameworks for that but they they also kind of uh, go in the same direction that this test data can be extracted away and put into grammar into like English sentences and gen just you know that that those tests are readable you know by anyone by your by your client by your stakeholder by your project manager. You know, so it, like you, we, you know, and the code beneath is just infrastructure. It's just instrumentation. Uh, you know, it doesn't really matter to those persons. You, you are wiring. You're just wiring the test data to the system, and that's it. All right. No just one more. <laughs> cool. Okay. Hey, hello, Marco. Uh, thanks for the thanks. presentation. Uh, first of all, who named these methods? And um, the second, uh, would you like mix in this table manner tests? Uh, positive and negative scenarios in the same, or you, or you will split them up uh, separately. Yeah, sorry. Uh, could you repeat the the whole thing? Uh, would you split, uh, or you going to test uh, in one place the positive and negative the tests yeah. in this table manner? Yeah, yeah, we could. I mean, it depends on the. So I guess. Uh, can we test positive and negative tests f uh, with the uh, same example set, right? Uh, Marco, you stole the microphone again. <laughs> I have questions for my questions. You know, it's not simple as that. I mean, like error handling and uh, throwing an error instead of a result or things like that. Uh, so I just, I kind of just, there's some a bit of echo. Like uh, you test if the function throws an error or um, it's yeah. a, a sort of a negative scenario, for example. Yeah, yeah, I get it. Yeah, well, okay. So, like, like I said, uh, where is this example? We had an example, just some for uh, like this, right? 
Okay, so basically, if you have this, uh, this example, all our examples in our one area, we can just you know have one test that skips one, uh, some of them, and another test which is a kind of a negative test that skips the negative set of the of the you know. So basically, the the other test would would uh, you know have filter num equals 42, right? It's, uh, but you know this is just one. Uh, you know, data. This is just one piece of data. It's easier to have a test just for with with, the, with using 42 without for each, but doesn't matter. But yeah, we can do whatever. It's, but this is actually JavaScript, just a JavaScript array. You can do you know whatever else you do with JavaScript arrays. You can map them, filter them, you know, combine them with other arrays. Doesn't matter. At the end, you just call the test function for each uh, element of that uh, result, and you know it, it works. <laughs> 